everybody, welcome to this playthrough for Pro Division in the Holiday Hills Tournament the video sponsored by Golf Clash and Playdemic. And before we start, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, visit golfclashtommy.com for more Golf Clash related content. Get the December special where you can get the updated text guides for just half the price. Check it out, patreon.com slash golfclashtommy. All the links in the video description down below. In this playthrough, I will give you some alternative approaches. I will give you some, yeah, I will give you some nice stuff here. I do believe, and I think I we should be doing well in this tournament by using these guides here. It's pretty straightforward, but it requires focus because some of the drives are very tough. And if you do get yourself in the rut, you will not be able to, uh, to save yourself from there. So that is very important. On the right hand side, you see the info boxes. And therefore, you can also, you know, you don't have to be that, listen that closely on what I'm saying, because in the end, you have the elevation for the drive, elevation for the second shot, then the ball and combined with the clubs. And sometimes I might use clubs that have a different level than you are, but listen to what I'm saying then, because I would never put out a playthrough if we can only use the highest level of the clubs. There is always a thought with it and many of the adjustments are based on using a very little spin so you in that case can use a very low level of the clubs that I'm actually using myself. So make sure you comment in the comment section below if you do have any questions. So let's go with hole number one. Hole number one in pro, we are going to play with the sniper. And here I'm going to play in maximum distance plus 15. And yes, we're not in maximum distance, but it works with the setup. One and a click topspin. Not one and a half, one and a click. And look here, we have a funnel here. So we're going to use the right side of the white ring to have that just by the bunker. And as we do have a wind right to left, we're not going to use any left spin. So the ball guideline is going to show that it's going to miss on the right hand side. But it w the wind is going to do the last thing. The reason I say only use 1.2 like or one and a click top spin instead of one and a half is because we're coming in a little bit too hot and there we catch a glitch there. And that is not a glitch that we do want to catch. We do want to make sure that it bounces a couple of more times then we're gonna get that one being super close or it's going to go in the hole for a nice little hole in one. Hole number two we are going to approach this hole on the left hand side. Sure the drive to the right is much easier but the second shot is going to be much tougher here I play with the extra mile that gives me the most distance of the drivers that I do have on this account. Max side spin to the left and no top, no back spin. Look at this. I stretch out so I see the second bounce being above the bunker. Then I take a look. How many rings am I into overpower? And in this case I were two and a half rings into overpower. So the thing that I do, I adjust maximum distance plus 10. Then I turn the screen around so the ball guideline is pointed straight forward. And then I push up two and a half rings. Half a ball of curl to the left. And now you're going to see this ball bouncing very nicely over the bunker. And having no problem to stop before the rough. Second shot here we're going to play with either the big dog or the sniper. But if you're going to play with a power three ball. I would suggest you to play with the big dog. Because otherwise you're going to have a problem to reach far enough. Playing with the sniper, then, then power four ball in my opinion, so you have more distance because you don't want to find yourself having to overpower the second shot. And even and if you go and play with a power four ball here, you can uh, then stay away from having to you know push up anything when it comes to your drive. So there is advantage playing with a power four ball here, but I would say power three ball would definitely be enough. Play with a kingmaker, play with a titan. Titan will require a bit more curl with the drive as it does not have that side spin as we do have on the Kingmaker. For hole number three, we're going to play this one as a par three, even though it's a par four. Super important hole where we need to get an eagle. 10% over adjustment, and we're going to play this one one to one. And the reason we played one to one is because it works. 
So in the end, look for half of the like invincible ring or the fourth ring to be inside the rough at the top with using uh, four bars top spin and two and a half bar side spin to the right. Then we're adjusting 6.1 rings and then we're going to take our shot. In this scenario, we are going to hit great left and it's still going to bounce on the fairway into the rough and roll out. And that's the only thing that we're looking for. I'm not really interested in getting this ball to be closer to the, uh, to the pin. I'm just interested in getting a safe eagle. So there is a line to go for the hole in one, but getting a hole in one on this one is going to be extremely rare. And therefore, why push harder than necessary? Now we're playing a line which will work with great left, great right and perfect. So just make sure that you're playing with a quarterback uh, or actually the rock because the rock has become a, a much better club than it was back in the day. But the reason I choose the quarterback here is because it is a club that many more players has at least in level 7 plus. The rock is a rare club, harder to upgrade and therefore I'm focusing on having the quarterback here as a suggestion. Navigator as a ball, if you're choosing a different ball like a Kingmaker, Titan, Katana, then you have a different power on that ball. Then you need to make sure that you slightly change your adjustment, continue with a 10% over adjustment, but you're going to play that one with a slightly less distance of your club. So, hole number four, 10% over adjustment, and we play it from medium distance. Rough bump time. Two and a half bar backspin and as much side spin to the left possible. Very important now when we do have a little bit of the red ring outside the rough there. Now, when you're going to adjust, you need to make sure that the wind arrow is pointing a little bit center to the right. So, at 1201 pull angle. And the reason we want that is because we want the ball to get a little bit more distance in the air and therefore going to suit perfectly with this adjustment. Bounce into the rough, roll here, getting it in for a nice hole in one. Katana is the ball, you don't need to play with a kingmaker, then the adjustment will slightly change as well. So Katana, quarterback, even if you have the quarterback in a lower level, you don't have to play with a quarterback level 10. For hole number five, we are just going to lay up on the right hand side. Pretty boring, I must say, but that is the win that we're getting. Now we're playing this one with an extra mile level seven combined with a katana ball. We do not need to play with a power three ball, so I do think that we should actually save the power three balls because we're spending a lot of them already. So four and a half bar top spin and as much side spin to the right possible. Red ring to the left by the rough there in the center at the plus six yard mark. Then we're going to adjust for a maximum distance with a 10% over adjustment because we're playing downhill. Just a normal shot, hitting a perfect ball. The ball is gonna bounce on the fairway and then it's going to roll here on this fairway. We're just gonna make it easy, get it down there and then prepare for the second shot. Second shot is going to be extremely tricky here. I do have two ways that I think it's going to be good to approach this one. First, we have the rough bump, and the rough bump is going to be extremely tricky as, you know, you need to get the ball to fall down exactly where you aim. You're gonna see me go extremely short here, it's because I do go short in the rough and the ball basically dies. Using a lot of backspin in rough is going to be a problem. Once I'm done with my adjustment here, then I need to push up one ring to compensate from going from a higher point to a lower point and therefore a different, um, a different elevation. If you do want to play a just more safe route and not risk anything with a rough bump, you can play with the Guardian using max backspin going on the left fairway and then go and approach the pin with that club. And then you can use whatever guardian you might like. And that's the same with the sniper. You can use a lower level sniper and still go for the pin. Tough par four, I must say. I was hoping for Chailwind for the drive, but you know, now it's going to just be a purely birdie hole.
Rahul number six, I want you first and foremost to disregard and do not focus on the level of my clubs uh, or like my friends club that sent me this video. In the end, you should be able to play this shot with whatever extra mile you might have. Four and a half bar topspin and as much side spin to the right possible. And four and a half bar topspin is the same amount as you're having even with an extra mile level six. Max side spin to the right, as I said, maximum distance with a 20% over adjustment and half a ball of curl outside the adjustment range to the right. Then we're gonna get it down there on the fairway and this drive is not easy, I must say. Now the second shot, as we did make a good drive, we can play with the sniper. And the sniper here is going to give us a very good opportunity, in my opinion, to get an albatross. We need to make sure that we're using as much side spin to the right possible and also leave at least two to three rings before the rough starts because when we do have tailwind the ball is going to carry a little bit further than expected always when we take our shots no elevation for the second shot bounce on the fairway over to the green here getting it down towards the pin for a nice and simple eagle but with a good chance for an albatross in the end if you don't feel comfortable with the drive or let's say like this if you feel that you're most likely going to go short with your drive, pick the big dog or the cataclysm instead of the sniper so you have more distance so you're not going to have to overpower your sniper for your second shot. But if you feel comfortable playing with uh, the drive, then the sniper is going to be giving you a much better time for an albatross from distance. For hole number seven, I'm going to give you two approaches. And once again, do not focus on the level of the clubs. This is recordings that has been sent to me by a friend to be able to provide you good quality here in pro. First, we play right hand side. We're using the blue ring by the rough line. And you can see here, I'm going with max side spin to the left with five and a half bar backspin, which is uh, the spin that you uh, will be needed to use. You can use less, but then you need to back up on the fairway even more. Now I play this one maximum distance with a 20% over adjustment. And I make a slight mistake here. We should only play this one medium distance because we're not in max distance and therefore we're going to miss this shot on the right hand side. Second option then. Now we go for a sand bump. Use the horizon. You can use the horizon in whatever level you might have it to. Because the only thing you're looking for here is topspin. Because the accuracy on the horizon is still crap. So it doesn't really matter what horizon level you are having. You're going to play this one medium distance with a 20% over adjustment. Use, I think it was 6.5 or 7.5 topspin. Go and look at how much I'm using. And then I'm using as much side spin to the right possible ball guideline through the hole and then the ball is going to get up in the air get into the stand it's going to roll up coming in with a very nice speed and we just missed that one for uh, the hole in one i do personally think that the sand bump is going to give you the best result if you're looking for hole in ones obviously with a sand bump it's always going to be risky but this is a route that i've been playing before and therefore i know that it's going to be consistent if you're following the steps that i'm choosing there. Kingmaker is selected due to to reduce the wind, especially now when we're playing on tiny spots. You can use a different ball if you want to. You don't have to use a Kingmaker, but I do think a Kingmaker would be very valuable on this very tough par 3. Hole number eight, it's time to go for green once again. And here you can see I have select in the info box to the right three different drivers. Apocalypse, Extra Mile and the Thor's Hammer. Why? The reason is that I do want you to play with the driver that gives you the most topspin of them three. And here, therefore, I play with an Apocalypse level four as it gives me six bars topspin, which is not something that my other two drivers are getting or like giving me. So... We play with a Berserker Ball as well to give ourselves the distance. You hopefully have some saved up from the Golden Shot. And even though we're most likely going to get that in the Golden Shot the next time as well. So therefore we can spend a few here in this tournament. 
Go with approximately 50% of overpower if you're using 6 topspin with your driver. We are coming in a bit too high in my opinion here and therefore we're gonna go a little bit too long. But the only thing we are actually focusing about is to actually get this ball to bounce into the rough and then roll out. So we're having a very easy and a nice time to getting an eagle. But Berserker Ball combined with a driver with distance and topspin is crucial and it's going to be the key if you're going to get the eagle here on hole number 8. 15% over adjustment. Very important as you otherwise will under adjust your shot and then we never know what's going to happen. Last but not least, we do have hole number 9 and we're going to play on the left hand side here on the fairway. And the thing that is very important here for all of us is that we do play with a driver that gives us the most distance and the most topspin. If we play with an extra mile level 7, make sure that you do pack the big dog in your bag or the cataclysm for that matter so you have distance for the second shot. Max topspin and as much side spin to the right possible to help your ball compensate for the wind push that we're having coming right to left. Max overpower because we do need to go and get as much distance as possible, bounce on the fairway and hopefully you will get a, a roll here that gives you more distance. Here you can obviously choose a different type of setup like going with a power 4 ball, power 5 ball which would help you big time and that is up to you to decide if you want to spend a ball like that. Here I'm having the Cataclysm as I do feel having Cataclysm level 4 is going to be better than any big dog that you have. But the thing that I want you to understand and get is that we do need distance for the second shot. It would be different if we play with a power 4, power 5 ball and we might have a driver that at least gave us 6 bars topspin like an extra mile level 8 plus or maybe a Thor's hammer or an apocalypse. Uh, and then we would be giving more distance and then you if so can choose a different club when you do approach towards the pin. Now my only plan is to get this ball to bounce on the fairway and get up there to either to the green or to the fringe and give myself a nice and easy eagle. I do consider this to be one of the tougher holes in this tournament especially for those of you having a club that only have four and a half bar topspin like a driver that only have four and a half bar topspin. So 10% extra for the drive, nothing for the second shot. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this playthrough for Pro. And I hope you're going to get some good scores out there. I do believe this playthrough is super solid. Uh, there is room for drops, but the drops is going to be hard to earn. But I hope I have provided maybe some alternative routes that you did not uh, really think of before. And that's definitely going to help out. I do think that we're going to see a minus 14 as a general score in pro. Or at least that's the score that I think is a score that I will be okay with. That is getting hole number 3. That is getting hole number 8 every single time. Hole 8 is still a little bit 50-50 with all the overpower that we're going to use. Where hole number 3 is going to be an absolute 100% must all the time. Make sure that you comment in the comment section below if you do have any questions. And go and subscribe to patreon.com slash golfclashtommy to get my best guides together with these playthroughs. Uh, and dial yourself in for the tournament. We have a December special. Look it up or check it out. The video is sponsored by Golf Clash and Playdemic. Thank you so much. Good luck in the tournament.